Okay. Uh, what was your branch of service? Staff Sergeant. Um, and your branch of service? Uh, Air Force. Okay. What were some of the locations that you served in? France. Okay. Italy. Is um, it's on my record here somewhere? I forgot now. Uh, that's okay. Um, were you drafted or did you enlist? I drafted. Got drafted. Okay. I tried to get it into service when I was still uh, single, and um, I didn't pass the test in Hartford, so I just forgot about it, and. Next thing I knew, they, they drafted me, and, and they knew all the whole story about me, where I flew an airplane and all that stuff, because I used to fly when I was single. Uh, and that's how they got me. So you used to fly before you joined? Oh, yes. Uh, where did you fly? I privately okay. on the airplane from the Waterbury Airport. Okay. Uh, just for fun, or...? Well, yeah, just for fun. The airport was quite quite close to my house, so I took advantage of it. Yeah. And I flew quite a bit. Okay. Um, so you were living in Terryville at the time? That's right. Do you remember about when you joined the service? Oh, let's see, 19... 35, I think, or 36. I don't remember correctly. It's around that time, 1935, 1936. Okay. Um, so you, because of your, because of your previous training with uh, flying, they put you into the Air Force? That's right. Okay. First they drafted me and uh, they refused me. And then when I looked, look, look, looked up my records, they pulled me out of the ranks and, and stuck me into the Air Force. Um, so because of your flight experience already, did you have to go through more training? Oh, yes. Well, a lot of training in, in the Air Force. Uh, where did you train? What? Uh... Louis St. Louisiana. Okay. Do you remember um, what the training was like? No, not really. We had to, uh, I know we had to fly quite a bit. But see, that's so long ago. Yeah. Um, do you remember what types of planes you flew on? Uh, not really, what the names of them. But in the sermon, when I got drafted, I drove, I flew with B-24, B-24s, four engine jobs. Okay. Um, so what did it, what did it feel like to you to be in the service? I didn't care for it at first. I didn't like it. They were pushing you around quite a bit. Yeah. Up early. Do this, or do this, do that. And I wasn't brought up that way because I was brought up on a farm. I was my old boss. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so that Louisiana was your boot camp that you did all your training? Right. And then did you go to another camp from there to train? Uh, yes, we went to... Uh, uh, Another big state. Uh, let me think. Oh. I can't think of a state now. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Um, so in Louisiana, you probably did basic training. And basic, then, basic training. And then the next one was more flight training? Right. Okay. Uh, I can't think of the other name. 
Oh, well. If it comes to you, that's okay. Yeah. Um, did anybody else from Terryville join up with you, or? Was one, one from Thomaston. We both went, went together. Uh, you and your a friend? Some, some other fellow that lived in Thomaston. Because we met together on, to get, get on the... Uh, uh, to get on the flight or whatever it was to get here. Okay. Um, I mean, that's what, 50, 60 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Was it difficult to get through the training? Right. It was a little difficult, yes. Okay. They, they really, really chopped at you. And I thought it was a big joke after a while. <laughs> <laughs> how was uh, how was the food at boot camp? Not so good, but food to, after I got on on base of we the we got the best food to go get, and we got the best training we got, and the food was excellent. We had the best uh, bakers and everything. Oh, okay. Once you got on on the, the base. base. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, their food was excellent. I never had such good food in the father farm. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, how about your uh, the barracks? How uh, was your sleeping quarters? We we had good barracks. It was, while we were in the state, we were still in the in the uh, buildings. But in, when they moved this overseas, they put us on listen huts. Okay. You know, listen hut is. No, could you describe it? It's a, it's a metal form. <laughs> okay. And a, and a few of you guys would sleep in a hut there? Oh, yes. Okay. Was it very big, long? Oh, okay, yes, it was. I mean, well, quite a few guys in the, in the barracks. Okay. Probably uh, maybe 30 or 40, somewhere around there. Okay. Um, so after your flight training, did you go right overseas? Uh, yes, we did. Yes, we didn't go anywhere else, else but overseas. We went to England. Okay. Uh, how, about how long were you in England? Oh, England, I was about... All total with flying at all was about like three and a half years. So you were stationed in England and then would fly to the continent? Yes, we fly it all over. Okay. What were your first impressions when you arrived in England? I liked the place. It was nice and uh, a little different to the United States. There were nicer people, uh, quiet and reformed. Okay. Do you remember what part of England you were in? Uh, uh, it was south of London, a little town in, next to the ocean. Okay. So, um, what was your assignment there? Well, let's see, during the war, we had to worry about them. Germans coming home from England to bomb us. Because they, they were in England, at the, I mean in France. Uh, they were stationed in France until we pushed them out. It took them quite a while for us to get rid of them. If you remember right. Um, so on a day-to-day -day basis, what would you do in England? Well, mostly it was guard duty. There was a lot of guard duty. And we were practicing firing at 22 miller. 
Tori told me her guns uh, pointing them out at the channel well, and it was anybody who was coming across. Okay. Because the, the Germans were stationed in France and we had a hard time getting them out of there. So when did you start flying over to France to... Oh, that would not be hard to say. I don't know. Let's see, I got the uh, England. Well, not long, long, not long after I we got the England. Okay. I think it was the first month or so we got there to fly. And then how would that work? Would you fly to France every day or how? No, about every third day. Okay. Yeah. It would take, everybody took turns at it. And can you tell me about how that worked out? Would you stay in France for most of the day and then come back? Over to England? Uh, well, they fly over to, to France. They come right back. It's next two, three days, we'd probably be out of submission again. And that tri that was for, for, for a while, quite, quite a while. It wasn't bad. We, it was safe enough to drive, fly, because we had fighters, fighter escort, escort when, we were on, when we were flying B-24s. We were buying B-24 Bowers, and we had about 14 guys in the in the plane. Okay. And we had fighters for escort. Take you so far, and then after that, we're on, on our own. And, and then they would give you a different city to go to each three different days? No, or? no, right directly to France. I don't know where, but... Right, right in front of France. Short way in front of France where the Germans were stationed there. Okay. And we had to gradually, gradually get them out of there. So we were fighting them all every day. I, I think not on every day, but every third, maybe fourth day. Could you tell me about some of those air battles that you did? Uh, no, not really. All I know is we got so far and they turned back and we had turned back. They're afraid of us and we we're afraid of them. And I was with the 67th Squadron, 47th Bombardment Group. And I remember the name of the, the, name of the squadron because we. We got a lot of credit for what we did. We had three squadrons in our outfit, 67, so 68th and 67th and 68th. I was in the 67th squadron. And we it seems like we were mostly going door, doing everything and they were doing nothing. So that was getting me mad. Seems like I had to do, they stayed back and we didn't. It's probably we had more better luck, I don't know. I don't know, we have a bit of luck, we were just as scared they were. <laughs> yeah. So, for a B-24, there's two, a pilot and a co-pilot? Co-pilot, and a, a radar main, radar band, and uh, uh, the guy tells you how, well, how to get to places. Navigator. Yep. And were there gunners as well? Uh, well, if they had to be, yes, but we had, uh, let's see, 14 to a plane. The rest of, there's two, two gunners on the right side, on the right ship, part of the ship, two on the left, one on the, up here, and one on the, ground, on the underneath the plane, all gunners. Okay. And the ones on the under, underground, Fighter had the most 
most dangerous part because if he got shot or even if we got a bad landing, he'd get killed anyway. Because we, we'd land on, uh, with him in it. He, he'd be in the middle of a, of a plane. It wasn't, it wasn't too much fun. It was a scary day every day. I got sick out of, I don't know, I forgot mission. My ears got plugged up and got uh, pus, pus coming out and they grounded me. So the man that took my place, they got shot down, they lost the plane. I felt bad about that because seemed I were I was supposed to be next to be shot down, but that wasn't. I was in the hospital, and that's how that happened. Did anybody from the crew survive on the, on their plane? Yeah. No, everybody got shot down. They they dropped down in the ocean, oh, wow. over the channel rather. And I was just lucky. I was in the hospital and trying to get my ears cleaned out because I couldn't hear anything. It was just, I guess it was just meant to be. Yeah. That I was supposed to live and he wasn't supposed to. And boy, I, I felt bad for well, a long time. I still feel bad about that. But. It, it, it had to be that way. Yeah. How long were you in the hospital for? Uh, not long. I think it was maybe two, three days or so till I get my ears cleaned and sucked out. They, they did one thing wrong. They uh, they put nitrate of silver on it and they burnt out part of my part of my left ear. Oh, wow. Nitrates night night of silver, I don't know what that is. To clear up the uh, scum and everything. So after you got out of the hospital, you went back to base and started Yes, but not, not directly on, on, real, on the fighting base. Yeah. More stayed, stayed behind in the barracks and did a lot of work there, preparing other guys to be flyers and, and oh, I don't want to really remember that anymore. That those were bad days. I was sick uh, most of the time, with my hearing and. Uh, Oh, well, I forgot a lot of it. No, you're doing fine. Um, so you started training the pilots instead? No, we were, we were, I was mostly on the ground and uh, working around the base, like preparing stuff uh, for uh, other pilots. Okay. I worked in the kitchen there, and I worked in the, uh, on the outside, taking care of things. With a lot of other fellows, we had a big group, and we worked together. Being careful that we didn't get bombed. We had an air raid one time, and, and uh, our base had an air raid underground. And uh, they approached our airfield by so 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 surprised so quick that uh, we all dived into the into the uh, caves or what they are to hide so we get shot down and uh, what's his name a very important name in history was our flying with us. He dived in there, and we all had a lot of water in that base. <laughs> he almost drowned. <laughs> so the, 
the place we were trying to hide, we couldn't hide too good. But we, we had to stay in. We were going to water up to about there. It was full of water. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, they were... There were uh, places we were supposed to hide, but they were filled with water because they weren't used too often. Well, that worked fine. But we had one fellow that's known, known as a, in the last history. He dived in there and he almost drowned because he went in as a first and he didn't know it was water there and he couldn't swim. He just walked in. <laughs> so. And I, that's an important name. I can't remember that name. How long did you have to stay in there for? Until everything was safe. We had guys watching out, looking out for us. Okay. That's good. So we're, we just talked about the air raid. Uh, would you like to pick up after the air raid? Uh, well, there was quite a few air raids. We had to run into, into the caves. And that one day, uh, there's a lot of water in one of the caves, and uh, he almost drowned because he couldn't swim. So we kind of pulled him out. And I couldn't swim by either, either too good, but I was there to help him. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, so... You said after you were in the hospital, you were doing the groundwork. For groundwork, a while. yes. Um, did you? How did you like that in comparison to flying over to France? It was safer and easier. Yeah. I didn't have to worry about too much. It was worried somebody to shoot me down. And that that lasted almost uh, quite a while. So you you uh, did the groundwork till the end of the war. Yes, right. Okay. Um, were you ever a prisoner of war? No. Uh, were you awarded any medals or citations? Well, there was a little few that they were listed in my, my uh, report, my discharge. Yeah, okay. Um, did you sustain any injuries besides the ear? No. Okay. Um, so then you you were sent back with your whole unit from England to the United States? That's right. Okay. Um, and when did you discharge? Oh, uh, it's listed on my, t my discharge paper. Okay. Uh, do you remember... Where you discharged from? Uh, no, I don't. Okay, that's fine. Uh, hmm. So, um, Stephen, how did you uh, stay in touch with your family while you were overseas? Well, I did one thing wrong. I didn't write letters back for a long time, for about two years, and they thought I was dead. And uh, I was... To me, I felt I was dead anyway because every time I write letters, I never received letters. And I forgot about home. I just forget them. So I didn't write to me. I forgot them. I had a bunch of letters in a bag, oh, maybe, maybe a hundred bags I was supposed to answer. But so my sister, one of the sisters, this uh, scientist to check on me where I got killed or when I died or what I did. And they said I wasn't dead, so I just didn't want to write. Oh, okay. I got mad, I guess. No, that's, you, were, you were busy fighting a war. <laughs> I was busy, busy hiding. <laughs> um, so we talked about the food in the barracks. How was the food over in England? It was good, passable, not bad at all. Okay. But the food we had was when we got stationed in the big, in the big uh, houses. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful food. But in the barracks, it was passable. Um, now, when you were in England, were you stationed there with other 
soldiers from England, yes. Ireland, and other countries? From all the countries. Okay. That was the jumping off point. A lot of them from the States. Most of them, all I remember is a lot of them were Chicago, well, Chicago, Chicago from my place. Yeah, and we knew each other pretty good. Did you interact with the British soldiers and the what? Did you interact with the British soldiers and the other? Oh yes. And you guys got along well. Oh yes. Okay. We had we had even German soldiers working on our base, doing duties. Were they? They, they were prisoners, but they were working for the United States, like the kitchen work and. and uh, I remember them feeding us, and you know, one of our boys got mad at the, the German. He says, I'm not going to eat your darn food. He threw the whole thing in his face. He was mad at the Germans. I was mad at the Germans too, but I wouldn't do that. But he did, splashed everything in his food. He's like, he says, nobody's going to feed me from your place. So I saw that pretty good. <laughs> Yeah. Was that the only bad interaction with the German prisoners of war? Or? Oh, yes. Okay. They, had their, they, were there, they, had, they were working for us. But a lot of guys, they were really good. The Germans were good. Okay. That's good. Did you always have enough supplies while, while there? Oh, yes. We were well fed and everything. That's good. Um... Did you ever feel pressure or stress? Do you ever feel stress? No. No? Well, I just did, well, did it along with, got along with it. I just meant to be here, be here for the rest of my life, do what I'm doing, and I'm going to do it the best I can. I didn't feel bad. Right. What good do it, what, what good it will do me? <laughs> right. I don't think about it. Um, was there anything special that you did for good luck? Anything special for what? For good luck? No. No? Everything was good. Okay. Um, how did you entertain yourself if you ever had any downtime? Well, they had a lot of, a lot of shows on the, on the, in, the, in our base from the United States. And they, they brought a lot of shows over. And they had a, little, a lot of good shows. And they had a lot of good guys coming over. Benny, Bob Hope, Doris Day. I met them personally. And they, they talked to me. And, and uh, it's funny thing, one thing, one, the guys asked me a question with my fingers because I had listed down as a accordion player. He said, can you do anything else with that pick up those fingers? I says, sure can't take a look at him. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a joke out of him. Yeah. So you, you got to meet Bob Hope personally. Oh yeah. I talked to him quite a bit. Oh wow. Yeah. He's a, he was a joker. Yeah. And Doris Day was nice, very nice, polite. I never knew she was skins her skin was rough. She not as pretty as she was in uh, the pictures. Oh, okay. She has uh, little dimples and things. And, and I, I didn't even believe it was Doris Day. Yeah, because of all the makeup. Right. Um, so you got to see a lot of shows and everything. Oh, yeah. Did you ever go into town off base? or? Uh, very, very few times. Okay. I like to stick around, around, the, around the house. <laughs> Do you recall anything particularly humorous while you were in the service? Uh, not really, but uh, I like to be a jokester, Make, making fun of things that get serious with them. Every time somebody, somebody says something, I tell you, make, made a joke out of it. They, they, they went with, with me and they, they agree with me. So you used to pull pranks on each other? Oh, yes. Could you tell us about some of those? I couldn't remember. I 
so long ago. Yeah. Um, what did you think of your fellow officers and servicemen? They were good. I had good ones. That's good. I had really good ones. They were very, very nice. Um, did you ever keep a journal? No. Okay. I start writing out little things in the little, like, little magazine or little book, but I lost that. I don't know where it even disappeared to. It was on a daily basis. When I got up in the morning, I did this, I did this, I did that, and so on. Yeah. But where it went to, who knows? Um, can you tell me about when you were discharged? Did, did you take a train back to Terryville? Or? Yes, I did take a tra tra train to Terryville. And uh, they, I go, we got off of uh, Bristol. And the rest of the place I had to walk over or uh, yeah, bum a ride back. And I took a bum ride back, just wanted to get to Terryville. And I got in Terryville, landed right in the center of Terryville. And I, in a beer, beer joint. So I went into the beer joint. I met a lot of fellows there. They knew, they knew me. I knew them. And we talked about things. And I didn't want to talk about it because I was, I was forget, trying to forget it. Oh, well, that was it. And then I walked all the way for, oh, to the end of Terry Hill, and I got a ride right to. Uh, Town Hall Road, and I walked the rest of the way from Town Hall Road, Town Hall Road to my house. And who, guess who met me at the, when I got off closer, closer to my dog, Trixie? She remembered me. She was, oh. she was so pleased to see me. Oh, that's nice. Um, did you have a good welcome home? No. Oh, I look all, all the fellows were tearing off that met me. Oh, they were so happy to see me. But that's all because I never knew too much on the farm. I live mostly on the farm. What What did your family grow over there? Oh, little things, little vegetables, little things, enough to, to support ourselves. Right. Had plenty of, plenty, we had plenty of it to eat. And I joined them to work hard. I was happy to, to help them. Right. Did you have any siblings that served? Yes, I had uh, had a brother in the Marines. He was a fighter in the Marines in the Battle of Battle. He had a sword fight with a German. They met each other in some in the woods. The German, I'm not a German, a Japanese. He met a Japanese. The Japanese had his German horse. And my brother had his Japanese go on. They turned around, walked away. They didn't dare to fight. Oh, wow. So my brother says he was happy about that. Yeah. Um, so when you got home, what did you do in the days and weeks after, after getting home? I helped him on the farm. Okay. Everything he had to do. It was in a, I think it was in the summertime that I got home. And they had a lot of work to do on the farm. And I was happy to do it. Did you uh, use the GI Bill at all for... Yes, I took up... I took two things I took up. I studied. I studied electricity. I went to the school. And I did... My music, I took music up to... Also, and I tried one more thing. I forgot that I was doing because I had something like two years coming to me, and uh, they uh, offered me about six months to try things, to different things. Yeah, which was good. I did. I worked in place different from different places. What uh, What school did you go to? 
uh, New, England Cons- New England Conservatory in Boston. Okay. I spent uh, three three years there. And then what did you do when you got out? Well, let's see. I did st- I start playing around different places, made money a little bit, and I start teaching it too. Then I, because I learned a lot, and I had quite a few students. I remember at least a, in a week's time I had about for different students about eighty or ninety students. And I I was teaching them really good stuff. And was this at a local high school or something? No, it was on, on, in, my, in, in my home. Okay. Or I went to their home. I just made it easy for myself. Yeah. <laughs> they all asked me to, to help them, so I did. So you're a music instructor for a long time? Oh, quite a bit. Okay. Um, well, I went to the university, so... I know it good. The only you, you could teach it so far because it gets difficult uh, a little late, a little, a little into it. It's easy from the beginning, but it gets hard uh, when you get into harmony and theory and orchestration and uh, uh, what other thing I forgot now. Oh, well. Um, Did you make any close friendships in the service? Yes, I did. I uh, made... about three guys that I used to hang around with. A a, a, a a fellow from... uh, He was from... uh, California, and he got my address because we left at different times, and he met my sister, uh, my sister Rose, and he wanted to marry her because uh, he had no place to go, he had no home or nothing, and uh, she says no, and, and they split up, and then that was it. And then... I didn't do much after that. Uh, so you, did you continue any of these friendships? Yes, for some time, quite a few of them. Okay. We become good friends. That's good. But most of the fellows that I was discharged from was from a Chicago. So I was quite a ways. There's a very few. There's only two guys I was discharged from uh, Connecticut. I was Thomaston, or two two from Thomaston. And we, after the war, we met together and said hello and all that. But I was not in the same service as him, right. as, the, as they were. They were in different outfits. Okay. But we got discharged at the same time. And they got, when we got discharged, got discharged. I got discharged in uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, that's what it was. Uh, and then I had to go choose my way to turn to, to, to Bristol, to turn it over somewhere. And that's how I, they didn't give me any, they gave me so much money to go on for a trip and take it to a certain place, and that's it. Right. And after that, you were on your own. And I didn't care it because I got it, got it to Bristol real good. And I knew what to do after I got to Bristol. I had to go to Terryville. From Terryville, I went to Town Hollow Road on the farm. And I walked quite a ways in Terryville, but it got picked up by a lot of guys. And they didn't go too far, but gave me a nice ride down to the Tal Hollow Road. And on the Tal Hollow Road, I walked all the way 
Oh, it's a house. And then you lived in Terryville for a while before you moved here to New Britain? Let's see what I did. I forgot now. Terryville. I told you I went to school for to Terry from Terryville. Yep. Yeah. And then after after I graduated, I went back to the farm. That's I think so. The farm, yeah. Went to the farm and helped on the farm for a while. Oh well. Okay. That's a long time ago. Yeah. Um, so. I just want to touch on some of these things that Cynthia wrote down here. Yeah, she wrote most of the stuff because she knew. I we talked about places I went and how we got out, and she knew most of it, and then that helped her a lot. Because yeah. when I got home, they always asked me questions after question after questions, and I had to tell them. And so she, I think she wrote them down. Yeah. So um, it says here that. You had a conversation with Queen Elizabeth? Oh, over England? Oh, sure. I met her. I met her on the base. And I met Eisenhower in the, in the right at Midman to We were supposed to give him a duck into the pond because everybody is dead. Or we're, we're thinking the wheels or something. We could throw him into the river, either to the brook. But when Eisenhower got there, and I was a staff sergeant at the time, I put the law down, I could throw a de an officer down. But uh, he says, I'll walk up closer to the, to the brook, or to the, and walk into it, and you get my feet wet, to let you know that I, I agree with you. And he was very nice, because he, he was all dressed up. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, he was uh, a real gentleman. So you, um, you talked to him one oh, on yeah. one. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, about ITU, we talked to him. He says, what were, were, what were you doing in the war, during the war? I told him, and he, he agreed with me. But he was our commander for the whole place, so he, he knew most of the GIs. He made it his business to talk to him. He's a wonderful fellow. Oh, so he went around and talked to... Oh, yeah, talked to everybody. Oh, okay. Yeah. He was, a, he was a regular guy. That gets a lot of respect, then. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I liked him an awful lot. I was, I was his friend. I talked to him like a, like a friend, like me to you. Yeah. And uh, he went over when I was doing, when I was at, on the farm and all that. I told him I, I was a farmer. He was glad to hear that. <laughs> I don't think anything about that. Yeah, because I know when he retired, he had a farm himself. Oh, yes. Um, so Queen Elizabeth was nice. You liked her? Oh, yeah. She was nice. We we met at a, at, at a dance, and I couldn't even, even dance with her because all the GIs were lining up for her at least one dance, or which one turned around. And I was at the end of the end of the place, and, and after she got through there, that's it. And she was ready to go home or go to the base. Then I talked to her, oh, and talking? I says, I, "I'm sorry, I couldn't dance for you." She, she says, "Oh, I said, hey, that's okay. It's okay, or whatever she said. I forgot." <laughs> that was funny because that's very nice, though. Yeah, she's an ordinary girl. She's not good looking at all. She's just ordinary, and uh, so. Would, but she was very nice. Yeah. Yeah. So you had dances on the base regularly. Oh or? yeah, they had, they had they had parties for guys that got home, and they had people coming over. They had Bob Hope, Doris Day. I met them. I talked to them quite a while. And, uh, Bob Hope made they, they they made a joke of me because I played the accordion, you know, on the bass. I played I played quite a bit the, around the world, 
I was pretty good at it. I played like a Queen Mary Air, Queen Mary ship. They were shipped over there or coming back. And I played on it. Well, music was nice on the, on the ocean. I used, used to love it. Just to go out on top deck, play the court, all the guys got around me. And we were having a lot of fun. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Could you, you could play a large variety of instruments then? Oh, yeah. I used to be perf I used to play professional accordion. Played radio when I played Radio City in uh, in New York. I played uh, Boston. I played a lovely, good place. I played WATR water by water radio water radio station. And I have fun. Yeah. Um, so, did you actually did you perform with Bob Hope? Because she wrote something down about entertaining with Bob Hope. Oh yeah, we. Uh, well, that was in the same show as he was. He was on a, It was. A, it was a show, and I was one of the players. In the show, that's how I met him. Oh, okay. Yeah, and towards the end of the show, I met him. So you went up and performed for the other soldiers. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I had the I had the accordion, so I I did a lot of playing. And I bought that accordion in England, and I carried it for twenty miles. Boy, and I had a good helper. A young fellow, he was helping me carry it. Okay. This was after the service that you had yeah, somebody yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it says that you met President Truman? Truman, oh, I met Truman, yes. He's a good guy. He's so, so natural, so good. He's just like a father to me. How did I meet him? I forgot now. I forgot now. I know I shook hands with him. His hand, his hand was so slippery, so weak, like, you know, I had to squeeze it. But, and, uh, he, was, he was like a girl. <laughs> I remember that. But Truman was a nice guy. It must have been after the service or something. After the service, yeah. yeah. Um, and then there's something here about moving up from the honey bucket. Honey bucket, oh, that reminds me. Oh, you know what the honey bucket was? Living on a base that had no toilets. The, the, people, the guys had to go in a, in, a, in a pail. And they gave you a chance, you had to clean the pails. It was, I was, I was picked up to work on the honey bucket, lock it to, I was, lock it to take the pail into the ditch somewhere off the base, clean the pot, and come back. And was this in the United States or? Over? The United States, yes. Oh, wow. Oh, sure, because we had that thing on it. When, they, when the our boys came back from overseas, they got the places that they had. Not much places to live. They were just building up the barracks. Was uh, was this in Louisiana? Pardon? Was this in Louisiana? Or yes, it was in Louisiana. Yes. Okay. So, so, Southbrook. Is there some place place by that name? Southbrook. Oh, okay. I forgot the names. It was a. It was Louisiana, but I forgot the name now. That's Barksdale. So, oh. Is that the name? Barksdale? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's Barksdale. Oh, Barksdale. Okay. Yes, it was Barksdale, Louisiana. So uh, the guy would always some say, ask me where I come from, or where I where I lived. I say, Barks, and Bark, Bark, Bark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that. That's nice. Um, so just a little bit more here. Um, 
So you were a music instructor for your career after the service, you said? Y yes. Okay. I, I started a music studio for quite a while, and I had one pretty good. And I got to the point where I had to go away, and I instructed my certain students that they were pretty good. They could become teachers. And I said, now oh, you're a teacher. you got to take over, over my place. And that's how that happened. And I gave that up. Okay. Um, how did your military experience influence your thinking about the war or military in general? When I got drafted, I didn't care one way or another. I said, I gotta go with something new. I didn't. I, I, I thought it was fun. I didn't give it it's kind of a war or anything. I didn't know what a war was. I uh, had a little friend of mine that I met from Thomaston, and uh, him and I sort of palled around for a while. And we answered questions to the guys. We had not much to answer because where we come from was nothing there. Thomas said there, you know. We're not too smart. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, did you join any veterans organizations? I still belong to a, a veterans, a veterans, or oh, uh, I belong to. Yes, I do. The VFW or American Legion. American Legion, that's right. Okay. And I, I pay into it. Yeah, American Legion. For I don't belong to any, any other. Are you still active? Oh yes. I still pay into it, like, uh, very collegiate. Okay. Have you ever attended any reunions? No. Um, how did your service and experience affect your life? I didn't, I didn't take it too serious. I didn't think I made anything special out of it. I just took it as a went. Did my daily work and that's it. Had nothing to do with anything special. Okay. Um, is there anything else that we might not have covered that you would like to add? To what? Is there anything else that you want to add that we might not have covered? Well, I, think, I think all the questions you asked me, I got them all pretty good. There's nothing more to add. I just have a little guy gives them trying to get along. Yeah. Okay. But I turned out pretty good. I worked hard. And uh, I, I started a school, busy school. I had that for quite a while. I had quite a few students. Made a lot of my students as teachers. And I played, I played in a lot of the important places. I played Radio City in New York, radio station. And I played Boston Symphony in Boston. I was on the air for, oh, about a, maybe close to a year on the radio station in Boston. And I forgot the station. I played the accordion on a ship, Queen's ship. Yeah, the big, the big English ship, the big ship, Mary, Queen Mary, coming back. I was on top of deck playing the war accordion. And the music was so beautiful up there. And all the guys are all trying to, try to get up there. And the captain of the ship says, Get back to your place where you where you belong, because the ship is going to ready to, ready to tip over. So everybody's captured. 
took off and went down back to her own place because everything was evenly designed. So many soldiers on, on, a, in a, on a certain places, certain times. So I even get, get scared when I heard him say that. I, I, was, I stopped for a while and I says, I better go downstairs <laughs> where I belong to. <laughs> so I guess I did. I don't remember if I, uh, what I did or, or did not. It's a nice story. But, you know, like, all the guys around you, you know, more and more you're supposed to be. Everybody on top deck can only hear me. And so they were told to go back to their, their rooms. <laughs> And everybody got mad. And I was having a nice, nice, nice time with the music. So it seemed so, seemed so good on the ocean. We were going along nice, and every time we were going to a wave, I'd make a little dip and <laughs> I made a big joke of it. And I couldn't actually play that much because I, I only had, I had no music. I, what I worry what I, what I mentioned when, when I was playing before, what I remembered. And I repeated a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff I repeated. So and they enjoyed it, they, they didn't care, they played, they listened to it. Yeah, because it was good entertainment. Yeah, I know. But I had, I had a lot of fun. That's good. Well. Stephen, I'd like to thank you for your service and for the time to be interviewed today.